Here we are, southern Arizona. Nice 100 degree day in May. And we're fixing to uh, move some dirt around. As you can see with all my heavy equipment. Today we're gonna go ahead and uh, start putting together a fountain. This is the parts here you see. And it's gonna go right in this spot right here. Which is inside the planter that I uh, built. You can check out that video on my YouTube channel. You can see we've planted a lot of extra stuff in here. Got this actually looking like a planter now. And now we'll add a beautiful fountain. All right, so I started by uh, filling in this area with a lot more dirt. So I got it up to the same level as almost the soil was. Then I packed it down real good with some water in between uh, loads of dirt and packing. Then the next day I came back and uh, this was all solid, dry, because, well, I live in southern Arizona and it's a desert. And then I uh, carved it out with a shovel, the area I needed. I've got that stake in the middle there to uh, designate my center. And... Uh, just went 22 and 3 quarters out from the stake to the sides. Got a perfect circle going. I just moistened it down. I'm going to start up my, uh, my concrete mixer and uh, pour my base. And I'll put you back on camera when I get to that point. All right, so I started uh, pouring. That's uh, four bags, four 60-pound bags right there. Mixing it with my little mixer over there. And I went ahead and put like a metal wire mesh down below just to uh, kind of strengthen it. But uh, I'm going to put you on tripod and continue shoveling it in. So I think that is going to do me there. That was eight bags, I believe. So this is my, uh, my center pipe for uh, the fountain. This is going to be uh, that hooks up to the pump here, the short end, and then this will be going up uh, the fountain most of the so what I need to try to make sure I do is get it pretty much in the center. As I mentioned before, the center is 22.75, which is roughly in that, but I don't want that to go with this over here.
so here we are with the uh, dried version of the pad I slid the uh, centerpiece down just to kind of protect the PVC coming out of it but as you can see that's for the uh, the pump I'll be cutting it off and adjusting it as needed and we'll add on to that once we throw the rest of the pieces up so I'm going to take this outer ring here and put it in place around just so I can uh, make sure the sides I want are showing and the the other pieces are on the back if I'm not happy with uh, what they look like just like on this it's got some little chips here and there which give it character but uh, for the most part I'll spin it around depending on which is the better side facing this direction from where we'll be sitting on the patio and my next steps are to uh, like I said we'll be putting that ring around uh, getting it set up before I mortar it then I'll move everything off to the side and bring the mortar in and uh, I'm going to mortar the base of this because it's not level right now and it also kind of moves back and forth a little bit. The pad itself is level. This at the bottom just needs some uh, mortar down there to uh, provide a, a little more level bottom to it and secure it. Since I'll be stacking uh, the rest of the fountain on top, I want to make sure it's in place well. All right, so I have them set up how I'm going to mortar them into place. Now I'm going to take a Sharpie and go around the inside of the circle just so I have an idea of where they were sitting. Then I'll move them all off to the side and uh, start mixing my mortar. My idea is to uh, place mortar not only underneath each one of the blocks, but in between them also. And then I'm going to build a wall of mortar around the edge and take the mortar up to the top of the inside of the block here to try and make it uh, um, a little moisture resistant as far as water escaping back out. Now, you'll notice the, the mortar is going to be the same color as the bottom here, and my bricks are a darker color. So I bought uh, this also which is a cement coloring and it's charcoal color so i'm going to mix what i need to try to get close to uh, the same color as these blocks here Alright, so uh, catch up here, put the first round down, mortared the blocks to the concrete base, mortared in between them, got a good uh, bottom base, I'm going to use the rest of this mortar that I just made up to come up the sides and kind of smooth everything out to hopefully contain the water, and then uh, That'll be it. Uh, I sprayed it down to moisten it up, uh, kind of get the uh, old stuff to stick to the new stuff well. And here we go.
So I've got uh, all the mortar on here that I'm planning on putting on here. Now I'm just going to take a moist sponge and run it over the mortar, kind of smooth it out and get rid of some of the rough edges. So I've already worked this area a little bit. You see how much smoother it is than over here. I take and kind of rub that in, smooth it out. You'll feel, uh, kind of like putting stucco on, you'll feel the sponge get uh, full of sand and grit. At that point, just uh, rinse it out some more and start all over. And also uh, flip it. See the the difference there to over there and here to there. I know I've mentioned my other videos dealing with concrete. Uh, you want to make sure you're wearing gloves like I've got on. Um, there's chemicals in this concrete that dry your skin out like it's never been dried before. I naturally have dry skin. I'm always putting lotion on, but uh, this stuff takes dry skin to a whole nother level. It's pretty crazy, so do yourself a favor, wear gloves. It's just a matter of letting it dry and uh, it's a good idea to keep it uh, moist initially 
I've heard that it helps uh, keep the cracking down if you just uh, let it dry slowly and the temperatures here are in the 90s uh, earlier today so it that didn't help too much but uh, it's cooled down into the 80s right now so I'm gonna keep it moist uh, as much as I can till I go to bed get up tomorrow and moisten it down again I'm not going to uh, move any further forward with it for at least a good week probably let it uh, let it dry before I put the rest of the uh, fountain up on top hook up the pump So I know you're probably saying, what? Yeah, the last time I had you on video, uh, there was just a PVC pipe sticking out of the concrete here with uh, the base on it. And voila. So when it came to the moment when I had uh, someone to help me put the next few pieces on, I didn't have the camera set up and I figured let's do this but um, setting the pieces on is pretty much the easiest part as long as you have enough people for the weight. Um, it's just a matter of sliding it down that PVC pipe that you saw sticking out of the base and getting them centered the way you want up on top and just line them all the way up. I'm gonna show you the different connections that I had and uh, we'll call it a wrap. So this is the, the pump that I bought. It has this little piece here that screws into the pump. This is also part of the pump that came with it. Down below here, it's got a little valve that you can turn on and off to regulate the amount of water. It's on full right now. Pieces I bought extra is this PVC piece here. It had uh, threads on this end female threads on this end and male threads on this end for this uh, extra hose that I bought. Down here, the pipe that you saw sticking out of the concrete, I put a uh, slip on on the bottom portion of that that slid down once you, you put some PVC glue and you slide the, that piece down onto the pipe and this has male threads on this end to screw this uh, hosing on that I have. This hosing is also the same hose that I put right in here somewhere is where the PVC pipe ended. I put a an end piece like a cap similar to that except it was straight. It was a slip on it glued onto the end of the pipe and then it had male threads going straight up. So then I screwed on uh, this type of tubing right here and it comes all the way up the rest of the way and you can see it peeking out the top there and then I just cut it off with an exacto. So this pump needs to be fully submerged and uh, yeah you're if you're like me you're wondering how can an electric cord go underwater but um, hey it works well. It says that if the pump's not fully submerged, it will uh, be a problem for it. It uses the water to cool itself. So if part of the pump starts sticking out of the water, it will uh, possibly overheat. So I keep it submerged. I've got the cord, as you can see, coming out here. I ran it under the dirt. And I actually put it right into a little irrigation box. 
where I had uh, the closest place I could uh, bring a cord in from is a distance away. So I had to buy a 50 foot cord, the orange one here, and run it to the plug in that I have up under the eave of my house. And then I put it down underground along my patio here and brought it all the way to here. I also bought a uh, switch that I have the pump plugged into one side and the extension cord plugged into the other. I don't think this is an exterior switch, but this is just a temporary situation that uh, I'm going to bring a plug closer with a GFCI closer to this box here and get rid of this down the road, but uh, this was just uh, to utilize the fountain without having a cord laying all over the place. And then I can just put this little cap over it 